Hey everybody and welcome to this 22nd slot of the Game Dev Days Advent Calendar. This is a special slot dedicated to game jams and to a very particular game jam, the D Chamber, which we hosted in a few weeks ago from the 11th to the 13th of December. Since quite a few of the slots before this already mentioned in their interviews how fun and also important game jams are, we thought it's quite fitting to also put the Game Jam special slot into the Advent Calendar. So the Austrian Deed Chamber we hosted some weeks ago was, due to the current circumstances, uh, completely online and it was hosted on our Discord and on, on itch.io. And in this video I will introduce all the awesome entries and games that came out of that jam and conclude with a short interview with our winner. So stay tuned. So if you want to check out the games for yourself, which we highly recommend because they are really great entries, then just search for the Austrian D Chamber on itch.io and you can find all of the seven great submissions there. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet was the topic of the jam. So the topic or theme was stay in place and every team created a game with their own spin on the topic of stay in place. Now let's just start from the bottom with Silly Stop by the team of Chuck Chuck Guy and Christian Walter, which is clearly inspired by the Ministry of Silly Walks. It uses Godot as a game engine and basically has a gameplay where you have to prevent pedestrians from colliding with each other by using the A or D keys to stop the pedestrians of their respective color. So as you can see you get points as soon as you reach the other side and if there are any collisions you lose points and the player has the ability to stop the pedestrians of a certain color and in that way try to make sure to get the most amount of points and the least amount of collisions. And I think depending on, on the head or the head color, the pedestrians have different movement patterns, which makes it a lot harder. And of course then there's the timer in the top right hand corner, which is your ultimate enemy in this game. So the next game is Through the Storm by Stefan Reichenauer, who was a one-man team as far as I can understand it, and who also helped with organizing the jam by managing our Discord channels and users. So the story is that your grandma has fallen ill, in the nearby forest lives a witch whose herbs can cure your grandma, so rush through the snow to get the medicine. I'll just start the game and take a quick look. It's made with Unreal Engine and has a nice introduction, story and gameplay. And there's obviously a crystal which can shield you from a snowstorm. And you have to get to your herbs. So unfortunately it's a bit cut off on the display here, but it says a storm is coming. And as soon as I take that crystal, you see the bar is decreasing and the timer is running. This has a very nice 3D environment with animated 3D character. I think those health, health bars belong to enemies. And it's also featuring Zelda like mini games or mini games as seen in Zelda. And here is one of the shrines where we can put the crystal to shield us from the oncoming snowstorm. Now let's give that minigame a try. So this seems to be one of those games with ice physics. Okay, I see. Nice castle design. I'm not going to spoil the ending here. Huh? Let's just leave it like that. So next up is Lazy Rider by Gideon Ung, which is taking in space 
and probably about relaxing in space. Let's just give it a try. So here we have the game using a very nice voxel main mesh and having a nice 3D space view. And all of this is made with their own custom Vulkan engine. So they use their very own game engine, which is quite an accomplishment, I have to say. And unfortunately, it's, it's missing some kind of readme and instructions. So I'll just click around and try to find out stuff. So ah, apparently, I can grab st stuff with the right mouse button and move myself, which gives a literally spin to the stay in place scene. Let's grab some drinks. This is now wrong. Okay. It seems like I have to grab some drinks. Come to me. Oh, yes. Can I also grab this? Eat the rock. No, I'm, I'm sure it's my fault and I need to figure out the stuff. But it looks very nice and as I said again, it's a great accomplishment creating a game using your very own engine in a game jam in this short time frame. So kudos to that. So let's see, the next game is Picture Perfect Everybody Smile by the team of Cree Afonso and Stefan Putzinger and Oliver Rotter. And apparently it's about taking the Christmas picture of your family. But if, of course nobody wants to stay in place for the picture and you have to make them stay in place. So let's take a look. This seems like a Unity game. Ah oh, nice with a menu. Let's just play. Ah, very nice music. Here's the camera and the characters. And I can click and drag them and get a nice outline on where to put them. Ah, I see, and then they start running away, and some other people are running into the picture. And ah, it seems like I can use those items to make them happy and stay in place. Have some feels. Once they are in place, I will try to take a picture. And apparently I have three pictures to take. Nice music. Oh, I was dead. Very nice game. So next up we have Snowstopper by Moritz Jäger and with help by Thomas Reisenegger. And as you can see on the very nice itch.io page, um, it's very clear what the game is about. It's about um, protecting buildings from avalanches, and it seems to be a complete simulation. So let's take a look. So this is a Unity game, and as you can see, I can freely move around the camera in this very nice 3D environment, and I have here different kind of barricades to construct and I can rotate them and I can use those to I don't know make sure the buildings are safe from avalanches I suppose and let's take one of the big ones like that And using the space key, I can place markers for, from where the avalanches will be started. And once I click on construction, a whole physics simulation is started and the avalanches will start. So let's do that. And this looks very nice and also very ambitious to do within one or two day, days of time frame to create this. And I did bad work here. One of the buildings is already crashed. Here are some more buildings I've lost. So clearly there's room for improvement for doing that. But I would advise to just try it on your own. It 
looks really great, a very ambitious project, and go and check it out. Then next up we have Frozen Asleep by The Lone Neighbor, which gets an honorable mention for having the highest raw score among all of the submissions. This game was made by, with Roblox, so just follow the link to the Roblox site. And there we have the description. In this game you are in sleep paralysis and your goal is to keep sane and wake up by distracting yourself with all kinds of thoughts. Choose wisely what to think about, don't get too overly positive or negative, and most importantly, don't go insane. So let's just give it a try and allow it to start. I think it's the first time that Roblox was used in one of our game jams, and I'm very happy to see it being included. So there we go. Let's open our eyes. So I'm looking around using the mouse and I can click to inspect the things in my room but I can't move, sleep paralysis has gotten me. Let's look at modern art. I think it's a painting and we have very loud sounds. Let's keep that down a bit. Ah, it's done already. I seem to have forgotten to close the wardrobe yesterday. Okay, I don't know if this is a positive or negative thought, but probably negative. Let's check the bookshelf. I don't even read most of the books in the bookshelf yet. I should get out of bed. Yeah, definitely. So this is a really well made game with a heavy narrative focus. And because of that, I will just stop here to not spoil the story, but I would highly encourage everybody to give this, a, give this a try. It's really well made. Oh, there's the demo, time to go. And last but not least, we have Flow, the winning game of this game jam. It is a one-girl project made by Kian Ru. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. And it's a jump and run or platformer game where you have to move around and get to the portal. So the platforms around you only move while you stay in place and they are staying in place while you move around. Collect the stars to open the portal to get to another level. And it's made with a really convenient Unity web player and this is the game. We have a timer at the top and whenever the character is moving around the platforms are stuck in place and once I stand still the platforms are rotating. Let's try to get up here and then we can stand on them still and try to get to the portal and to the next level. Collect stars until the portal is activated. So this sounds harder to do. And it seems like if I press space a little bit longer I can jump higher and I get the star. But I guess there are more to collect and the timer is running. There's another one. And it also features a really simple but lovely art style. Very well fitting for a game jam with a short amount of time to get some nice visuals. Uh, and I got it. Let's see and go on in the level. Is this a portal? I'm not sure. There is the portal. So I will stop it here and encourage you to try it on your own. It's really fun and I guess there are probably more levels to explore. And to keep with the tradition of having interviews in the slot of our advent calendar, we now have an interview with the creator of this game. Enjoy! Hello and thank you so much for being part of the interview series. Um, can you start with the introduction of yourself? Hello, yeah, of course. I'm Stephanie and I'm a software engineer. At the moment, I'm taking a year off to study game engineering. For, uh, so from my work, normally I work in the software engineering section and now I 
study uh, game engineering. And yeah, I like to participate in game jams. It's a hobby of mine. And yeah, that's me. Um, you just mentioned before we started the interview that you took part in two game jams in a row on two weekends. Tell us everything about that. <laughs> yes, um, the last weekend was uh, the Clue Jam from the university in Klangfurt. And the weekend before I participated in the December and yeah, I just really like to participate in game champs as you see. And I wanted to um, try out what I can do alone. So that's why I make, made my game um, just by myself. I wanted to see what can I achieve in just 48 hours when I work alone because in the other game champs, I always worked in teams and had just a part to do what is totally normal for game champs. And this time I just wanted to see what can I do? So, yeah. I mean, um, in the previous interview, so many um, developers and studios gave the advice that a good way to get into the games industry and build up knowledge and also like a community is to participate in game champs. Um, and I think this is also why we have this Game Jam special today. And I would love, like, I mean, you're a Game Jam veteran. How many Game Jams did you already um, took part in? Um, I think it was my seventh last weekend. So I started in 2016 16 to participate in Game Jams. And yeah, I started with totally no knowledge how to make games. My first Game Jam, I got, just got there and thought, okay, um, this topic is interesting. I asked the people who had already formed a team at this, at this time um, if I could join. And then we just started and we found something for me to do. And since then, each game jam, I learned so much more. And every time I thought this, uh, I got, so before the game jam, I thought, Oh, I will look up this and this and this and at the game jam, I will know how to do this. But mostly it was just, I get there and learn everything at the game jam because I didn't prepare, but I learned so much in the game jams and I took everything with me. And it's really a great way to start, I think, because it's, you, you see what you can achieve in such a short, short time. Mm -hmm. And it is really great in only 48 hour you produce a game people can play it's not perfect but it's playable and it's great um <clears throat> do you have any advices for people who want to take part in game jams or are new to game jams um i would say just go there and find the team and have fun I think the most important thing is really to have also fun, not just stress. So yeah, that would be my advice. I just do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think like having a good experience, having fun, like enjoying like this vibe of the game jam. I think, I think this is, this is key. Um, yeah. So what, what are your future plans? What's up next? Yeah, I, have plans to make a small game for, by myself, which would take a bit longer than game jams. And I plan to create a blog where I post things I learn and where I can document my way. So my journey through this development. And I want to give people a platform to learn. So when I learn something, I want to document it so that I also can look back at it and then maybe some people will see it and can learn something from the tips. So I, at this game jam, I learned a bit about animation. And so I thought, oh, I could just write about it and people can find it. I know there are a lot of YouTube uh, tutorials out there, but it's not so easy to find good written tutorials sometimes. So for me, it was not so easy and I thought, that's something I would like to do. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your passion um, um, about game champs with us. Um, and yeah, happy champs in the future. And yeah, I'm sure we'll 
we'll see each other in one of the future game champs. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Bye. Bye.